Hi guys, welcome to this week's update. Last week was a bunch of maps released, which I hope you guys have picked up and had a lot of fun with. And I didn't really do an update with that because maps are relatively self-explanatory. Going into this week, the major two things that are coming out are a cheat sheet, and the new cheat sheet is this 99 player action cheat sheet. Each turn in 5e, you get an action, a bonus action, a movement, a free action, and I think, anyway, and it goes through, ah, reaction, yep. And it goes through and explains what the most common uses are for each of those. And these little shields at the end open up the information in SOD so you can read more about them if you wish. Gives you some miscellaneous things. In the stat assistance down here, there's the stat wall, of course. And this is based on the 4d6, and you drop the lowest. I actually ran the statistics, the odds for all of those, and used the likelihood to create a single table that does it all at once. So you can just roll this six times. Two, three, four, five, six, and 14, 14, 11, 15, 14, and eight. Very reasonable roll there. And of course, as you can see, there, all, there is a small chance of getting all the way up to 18, and a minuscule chance of going all the way down to three just as if you were rolling 4d6 and low, dropping the lowest. And then of course there's the most common of the point by values. I figure if you're master of the point by, you can come up with all the oddities you want. This just gives the three most basic ones, the even split of spraying them out to give you a nice balance, the let's go extreme high and low, and the I kind of want everything mashed in the middle. And those are really the three mentalities I see most of the time, and so I list them here. So that was a good chunk of time. The rest of the time, since one of my Patreon guys that send me money and helping me continue to do this, is a huge fan of wizards, I did up a bunch of new wizard schools that I've balanced, and I'm waiting for, to hear back from you guys and what you think of them. So there's the Defiled School, it's kind of like a vampire-type feel, trying to do lots of damage, but also suck the life out of the plant life around them, and at higher levels, even suck the life out of other creatures. The School of Waiting is really based around artifacts, and being able to figure out where they are, find them, and do stuff with them. That being said, it's a relatively weaker class, and it's really going to depend on the GM, and how many artifacts are in the world, and how much he lets you lean into that. Big Six is a spoof class that has been around for a little bit. I'm going to continue reworking and rebalancing. It's, believe it or not, a low intelligence wizard. Based on what would happen if you cast spells sp so spectacularly poorly that they actually blew up in your face, and that was the intention. So instead of having a spell that's based on making something pretty much invulnerable, and if you cast it poorly, it blows up. And that's the bulk of that class. The School of Darkness essentially is of the mentality of why should I talk to you when I can just blow you up? Which is the exact opposite of the School of Purity that's why should I kill you when I can convert you and make you my friend? The School of Recomposition is all about countering other spell or effects. So by using the spell magic and using counter spell, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff even changing the nature of a spell that someone just cast. Now it's still going to cost you uh, the spell slot to cast the counter spell in appropriate yeah, its level, but let you change an incoming fireball to maybe a other spell of that nature in an area that would possibly give a boon or benefit to your players instead of them getting hit by a bunch of fire. The School of Stones is kind of an off-bending twist, has a bunch of spells, one of which I wrote from well, two of which are new. Orc Shot's been around for a little bit. It was a racial thing. It's a relatively low-level cantrip. Then Creeping Stone is essentially you cast it on someone and now the stone slowly creeps over them. At any point, they could perform a DC breakout to get free of it or someone could try and break them out themselves. But with each failed attempt, it keeps growing. With each time they try and do anything, it keeps growing. And it can grow all the way up to DC 30 and they're just like stuck there. Now, it's not meant to be impossible to get them out, you could chip away at the stone that's growing up around them, and each time you spend an action to chip at, you, re you reduce the DC by 5. So you can't just leave someone encased in stone, 
but it could be useful for disabling someone for questioning or other stuff like that. That brings us to the School of Tacticians. That's all about anticipating your opponent's moves, saying magical traps and the like, and just destroying them as you do that. So the magical trap here at level 6 actually reduce, removes the material cost of casting the Glyph of Warding. Now you're still going to have to spend a spell slot, but that removes the 200 gold piece price, which is huge for if you want to be placing traps in advance and then tricking your enemies to step on top of them, which is really what that score is based about. The School of Weaving posits that there's these little weaves, these threads, all throughout and that by connecting one point to another through the weave, you can do strange things. At low level, you can grapple someone by tying them into the wall with these invisible threats that they then have to break out. Middle level, you can open small gates from one place to another. They aren't that large, they don't go that far, but that could still be useful. Up to the highest level, you can actually connect two creatures so that anything that happens to one happens to the other. So if you have two bosses and you manage to connect them and they fail the DCs and all of that, now, as you damage one, it also damages the other. That also means that as one of them gets healed, the other one will as well. So those, it can backfire if you use it poorly. Well, that's the updates for this week. Thank you guys for all of the advice so far. Thank you for voting on what you want to see. I'll drop the link in the bottom underneath the message for you to continue voting and showing me what you guys want to see next. I especially want to thank those that have joined in with me at Patreon, those that have liked and followed this channel and are sharing it with their friends. Thank you guys so much for helping with this game launch, and hopefully together we can make something that will impact a lot of people and we'll all have fun together. Thank you guys, God bless, and have a great day. Bye!